This is a fellow I've been wanting to talk to since the early 80s. I first became familiar with his work in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where he was an integral member and still is to one of the top bands in the land. Morris Day in the Time. I still call him the time because more Morris is cool and all, but uh, the fellows in the band are definitely uh, just as important. He has been playing drums in Minneapolis for quite a long time. His name is Jelly Bean Johnson, and folks, you may know him as the stellar great drummer from the time, but he is a great guitarist, singer. So I don't know about singing too much. We're going to find out, but uh, songwriter, producer, a lot of records his brother has produced, but he is uh, well-esteemed in the music business. Folks talk very highly of him, and I've seen him. He knows his music, and we're going to talk to him right now. I want to thank this busy man from taking time out of his schedule from Minneapolis, St. Paul, Let's give a welcome to the upper room to Mr. Jelly Bean Johnson. How you doing, Jelly Bean? How you doing, Joe? And how are things? Uh, are you taking a day off? Uh, <laughs> I guess you could kind of call it that, yeah. Somewhat, right? Yeah, somewhat. <laughs> yeah, so, so how are things with the time uh, going out on tour? I know you've been starting back up on those gigs. Yeah, we, uh, we've been doing spot dates and stuff. We're going to be in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida on the 29th here of April. And uh, we got dates coming up in May, too. I don't know exactly you know what they are and stuff but i do know that they are are coming up and stuff but the most recent one is the 29th of, of this month right and I, I myself and a lot of folks definitely became familiar with you in about 1981 with the time and and your drumming <laughs> is incomparable i mean if you've seen jelly bean play live just giving it all uh you know i gotta thank you for all the great musical memories thank you man. i i really appreciate it man i, I really do it's, it's you know, the drums are in my blood. Drums and guitar are both, actually. But mm -hmm. drums, I started the drums first when I was 15 years old. So it's just... Uh, yeah, getting kind of back thing. to... You were going... Uh, was it really competitive in those uh, high school days? It was, you know, it, it wasn't really competitive. But the thing is, is that it, it was a lot of fun just to do. You know, it was something to do other than to be out in the streets running around trying to be in a gang or something, you know? Right. So I was... Instead of doing that, I was always at home, you know, down in the basement you know, woodshedding and trying to play records and trying to get better at what I, you know, what I could do. And stuff, so. Now you're talking about 15. Is that going I back thought, to... Actually, 13, to be okay. honest. Okay. Yeah. You, you're from Chicago originally, right? I was born in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, my mom moved me from there when I was like 12 years old to keep me out of the game because we lived in a real bad neighborhood. We lived in, on the west side of Chicago and I live right in the heart of the game, man. <laughs> and they was about to recruit me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so what, so what got you in the drum? Did you start with, you know, a lot of people had got that drum pad, right? Well, with me, I used to drive my mom nuts when I was like uh, 11, uh, yeah, 10, 11. I used to drive her nuts because I would beat on our, we had like a coffee table. Okay. And so I would just beat on it with my hands all the time. So, you know, my mom, what she would do is every Christmas day, you know, she would buy a drum set, but it would be made out of paper. Well, by Christmas night, it'd be tore up. So, right. <laughs> and so she would never get around to buying me another one until the next Christmas. So right. I went a couple years after that, she finally got me one when I was 13 that I couldn't, you know, tear up. And that's when I started to get, you know, kind of good at it. So what, what kind of drum set was it? It was, uh, God, it was a Blue Sparkle. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it wasn't a name brand or anything, but I just knew I couldn't tear it up. It was, uh, it, it, uh, it was blue sparkle a couple pieces of blue sparkle and then i had this like floor time that was red sparkle uh-huh and uh and you know they had actual drum heads on them and stuff and and uh i just you know i was that was a great day <laughs> right <laughs> a happy day in the johnson household right day in the jelly beans life <laughs> right so so you got you got the drum set and everything uh -huh. um what were you listening to back then james brown uh-huh james brown um who, who was your favorite uh james brown drummer Oh God! I want to say Clyde Stubblefield. Whoever it was, either Clyde or Jabo. Right. Uh, whatever one was playing, like Lick and Stick, and I don't want nobody to give me nothing, and can't stand myself. All that. Uh huh. All that stuff. That, that was like school for me back then. You still bring those records out? Oh yeah. I yeah. Got a, I got James Brown anthologies out here. <laughs> right. <laughs> James, that's school, man. Yeah. School. I mean, Those he... that old, that '68, '68 through the '70s, man. That is school when it comes to funk drumming. Yeah, we played Clyde once in a while. We got some of his import CDs. Still, yeah, you know, you know he he still comes out with some kicking tracks. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know I, I'm I, I've been in this business a while and stuff, but I I can't say I never met him, man. I could I really would like to meet him someday. Him and uh, I know they've had uh, 
him and Jabbo have had like uh, instructional videos out, and that they and they've been in the in the drum magazine. I finally got to be in drum magazine after all these years. I was right. like, tripping out too. You know? Long overdue, right? Yeah, yeah. So you you going back to your teenage years? Where, where'd you go to school in Minneapolis? In Minneapolis, I went to uh, I went to Lincoln Junior High because mm-hmm. uh, I moved here from Chicago in '68, and I, I went to Lincoln Junior High. And what the cool thing about that is a lot of it was a lot of musicians that went there. Prince went there. Uh, he had to be like 12 or 13 himself. Andre Simone was there. And we all were there in like seventh grade, you know. Right. Up to seventh grade through ninth grade, that's where we went. And then uh, when I left there, I went to high school. I didn't want to be, you know, here. I lived on the north side, but, you know, everybody was going to north and stuff. So they bust me. Which I kind of wanted to be to be away and, and kind of create my own identity. I went to a school that was in Southeast Minneapolis, which was on the campus of uh, the University of Minnesota. It's not there anymore. It's called Marshall University. Okay. And that's where I went because you know that's back when I had my sport days when I was playing basketball and stuff. And you know I, I we had so many good players on the north side of North. I went to North. I, I probably would have had a tough time even making the team because you know all of us. Right. All of us couldn't play, you know. There's only 12 spots, and we had a bunch of cats that could play basketball. And stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Could you still uh, take it to Terry to the hole? Yeah. Uh huh. Because <laughs> I hear he used to be a great player too. Uh, Terry was a great. Terry was great in track. Terry was yeah. very, very fast. I remember that. Uh, and then he tore up his knee, right? He tore up his knee playing football. Okay. You know? And uh, that's what did it. But yeah, he he was he was kind of ridiculous when he was young, man. I I've seen him just catch. He let guys lead first. <laughs> <laughs> I used to tease him about that. Man. Yeah. So, so you had you had the sports going, and then of course the music. The music was at. Yeah, I had the sports going during the day and music at night. Right. You know, That's man. a good way to keep you out of trouble. Yeah. It it, it worked. It worked for me. It really did. You know, I mean, you hear. I oh, go ahead. I could have very easily been in the streets, man, doing wrong, man. Ain't no question. <laughs> Now, good thing you took that route. Yeah. And definitely a lot of folks these days ought to be uh, oh, yeah. heading that way. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Pick, picking up those live instruments and, you know, staying out of trouble. Yeah. But you know, uh, that's the thing uh, today. It's just hard to get kids to play. I mean, I, I'm sure there's a lot more distractions and stuff. It's, uh, you know, we live in a, you know, with all the computers and stuff like that. It's right. hard. You know, it's, kids have so many, you know, things that we didn't have when we was coming up. Do you see at, at your uh, shows that it, we're talking teenagers, or maybe even a little older, come up, giving giving you props for playing, and they're, they're taking up the playing. Well, it, it, not as much, but some. Mm-hmm. I, I can say some. You can tell the ones that really are serious about it, and the ones that just, you know, I'm just an old person in their face, you know. Right. <laughs> but uh, you can tell the ones that are serious about it stuff because they they ask you know good questions and stuff. You know, how did I start playing? Who did I listen to? And all that kind of stuff. Right. But. uh there, there's some that you know just don't care, man. They just you know they like I said. There's a lot of other distractions out here that they'd rather be doing, learning how to rap or something like that. Yeah, you know? You know? instead of writing writing instead some of, songs, you know, instead of you know woodshedding in your acts. And, and granted, you have to to get good at your at your plan. You have to put time in, man, mm-hmm. by yourself. <laughs> you know. And yeah. when when did you know at that point that this is going to be my career? Oh man. Um, and, you know, it's kind of hard to say because, you know, I was doing this while I was in college, and it was it, it was really, you know, they're hard there for a while and stuff, and I got a little discouraged. And then uh, around 79 or 80, uh, I was in a band. It was me, Terry. We had Alexander O'Neill singing. Um, you know, it was flight time before it became, you know, a production company. It was, it was a band. And... Uh, Around that time, around 79 80 and stuff, we seen, you know, Prince, by that time, Prince had put out his first album. And we was doing, like, little demos on our own and stuff. Well, he had, you know, mentioned to us that, you know, if he ever got a chance, he would help us. You know, but uh, he was still getting himself together. So we didn't, you know, we didn't even pay, you know, that much attention to him back then and stuff because we knew he had to do his own thing. And we were trying to do our own thing. We would, you know, we wouldn't even take money from the gigs and stuff. We would take that money and put it back in the going in the studio and trying to do our own stuff. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, we had a lead singer, too, called, uh, I don't know if you ever heard a few years ago, Cynthia Johnson. She did. Oh, that. yeah. Lip sync? Lip sync. Right. And she left to do that, you know. But she, she was, we were all in the band together, man, like 17, 18 years old. So what, what kind of jams were you playing back then? We were doing the, all the, the Rufus and Shaka Khan stuff. And, mm-hmm. Uh... God, you know, we went through a few things. Like, we had Cynthia at first, then after she left, we got Alex. And then when Alex came, we did, you know, uh, 
we did you know a lot of parliament funkadelic and uh we did alec uh, what did we do uh uh well, who is that teddy pendergrass larry graham that kind of stuff and, you know because alex could sing all that stuff oh yeah so it was it was cool it was a cool time man. so you, you had slight time going and then uh prince had his own thing prince had his with own some thing. talented players uh, uh, a lot of competition uh it was a few it was a few competitive bands back then but we still as far as the black bands the, the problem here you know we live in minnesota so sure. it, it wasn't that much work for us Right to get, you know, we could do all the sororities and you know things like that, but we couldn't, you know, we couldn't get in the nightclubs because we were too young, and even if we could, we were too black. Right, so, <laughs> you know, so you know we had that little problem going, but we 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 played enough to keep our interest. There's, there's no question about it. There was a few black clubs we did play. Yeah, well, what is that? We were talking Nasarama. Uh, the Nakarima. Nakarima, okay. Yeah. The Nakarima is definitely helped in our development. All of us, uh, from Prince on up, Terry, Jimmy, all of us. It really helped us because, I mean, we would only play that once a week. It would be on Sunday nights, but, you know, it would be, you know, it'd be, it would be good. So, I mean, every once in a while we would do the whole weekend, but most of the time it was just, you know, one night a week and stuff. But it helped. You know, you look forward to doing that. Yeah, and, and you definitely uh, created, you yeah. know, great sound. And, and <laughs> Prince, Prince definitely took notice of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, you know, it, it was funny and stuff because, you know, uh, we always had his respect and stuff, but we didn't, you know, it was kind of surprising, you know, when he made it and stuff, because when, uh, when he came out and stuff and he was playing, you know, when I, when I met him at like 12, 13 years old, he was like this ridiculous guitar player, you know. Mm -hmm. So when his album came out and it had all these keyboards and all this singing and stuff, I was like, no, that can't be just him, but right. it was, you know. Yeah. You know, and, and it was just so amazing. I had so much more respect for him than after that, you know, because when I saw him, he was, you know, he was 12 years old. He was a little short guitar player. He could sing and, and play the guitar, but I didn't know that the keyboards and all that other stuff was there, you know, that he had it like that. So. And did you know uh, prior to making that first record that this guy would take off that big, or did you just know him as that guitar player? I just knew him as that guitar player. Right. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, I yeah. I knew him as that guitar player. I didn't... You know, it was a shock to me. It was a real shock to me. And, and I mean, we're talking about 1978 here. Sure. You know, and we had just been rival because, you know, he had a rival band with Morris. Him and Morris were in a band called uh, Grand Central. Mm -hmm. And Morris and Andre Simone were rival bands to us, Flight Time. Flight Time was me, Terry. Uh, we didn't get Jimmy Jam until later, but it started off with me, Terry, and a bunch of other cats around here. Monty Moore, stuff like that. That's what uh, Flight Time was. And where was the... Uh the point where Prince asked you guys, we want to put the the time together. Uh, that was nineteen. I want to say like nineteen eighty one, okay, late eighty and nineteen eighty one. And originally, I wasn't I wasn't invited. Originally, they was uh, uh they was Morris was going to play the drums. Okay, and uh, they went and had their meeting and stuff. And uh, I was going to play. And more uh, during that time, Morris had a a cousin that was in a band that uh, was national, called Champagne or something like that. All right. And so they was, I was going to go do that, and uh, Morris was going to play the drums in time, and Alexander O'Neill was going to be the lead singer at the time. Well, they had a meeting with Prince, and <laughs> Alex flipped out and stuff, and Prince was like, Morris, no, this ain't going to work. You're going to have to go back and get Jelly Bean, and you're going to have to sing. Well, was it a shock to you that... Uh all this transpired like that? It was kind of, yeah. Right. It was kind of, you know, I was kind of surprised when it happened like that, but it happened really quickly, quickly when it did. I mean, right. It, it, it was like, hey, man, we're going to fit and do this, let's do it. Yeah. Right. So I, I got to ask you, you, you know, most people know the uh, the origins of the time, at least the, the first couple studio records that uh -huh. uh, Prince played most of the instruments uh -huh. and, and sang the vocals and Morris bringing in the vocals. Uh -huh. Were you guys, was this uh, made known before the project or, or after? It was pretty much known before the project. It mm -hmm. was pretty much we pretty much known that, that it was going to be like that and stuff. But the thing is, for us, is we you know we we wanted the chance to get out there and show, you know what we could do. We knew we had some extraordinarily talented people in the time. Right. Oh yeah. No we doubt. Knew that I mean, from Jimmy and Terry through Monty and myself and Jesse, we all we all knew we were special. But the thing is, you know, we had to check the Eagles at the door to do this. Sure. You know. Uh, and deal with Morris and you know and all that kind of stuff. It, it, we knew we were it, it was we were taking a chance, but we knew it it would be a good chance if it worked out. You know, and, and that's what happened. So. Yeah, I mean, you guys definitely put your own spin on yeah, on these tracks, yeah. and then you know later years you definitely put more input yeah, into it. Yeah, yeah, 
Well, then he, I mean, plus it was kind of like proving ourselves to Prince, too. He didn't know, because just like I didn't know he was like that, he didn't know that we had the talent either like that. Oh, yeah. And then once he found out, he's like, you know, I'm creating the monster here. <laughs> 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 it kinda, it kinda, I, I, I can remember, because uh, one of the first times I ever saw you guys play was uh, on the the, uh, the Vanity Six. And, yeah. And yeah. you guys and Prince, I guess also known as the Triple Threat Tour. Yeah, yeah. But I caught you up in Hartford, Connecticut. There was a big snowstorm that night. Okay. And, uh, man, you guys just killed on stage, and people we were just... Used, we used to take pride in just, just trying to destroy him. I mean, because... Right. <laughs> <you know? laughs> that was our only way. I mean, because he was in charge. You know? Oh, yeah. He basically was in charge, but so that was our only way to really, you know, you know, to put up with the stuff we had to put up with. You know, that was our way of uh, getting revenge. Was right. To and try to so so was, it good, was it good natured or you guys kind of... Sometimes kinda... it was good natured. Sometimes it was personal. Right, right. You know, that's that's how it is. I, we all competitive, man. We are, you know, that's, we all got a certain amount of ego and stuff. You know, I guess you got to have a certain amount to be good at this stuff. But, uh, you know, sometimes he used to make us really mad, man. So, you know, this is what <laughs> we would do. That's how you got back, right? That's how we would get back. You know? And he, <laughs> he began to notice that, too. I'm glad it got his attention. <laughs> right. So, you know, you, you're having the tour there. And I could I could remember even reading, uh, like, Right On and, and Black uh -huh. Bee Magazine. You guys had some wild tour buses, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We had a lot of fun, man. It was a lot of fun back then. It really was. Now, you, you definitely guys worked on a lot of... Um, rehearsals and tours which are legendary right to rehearse I, you know i'm glad you said that joe man we used to i don't know if bands do that today but we used to rehearse like it was a job man we'd be there like by noon 11 o'clock noon and we wouldn't leave there at eight nine ten o'clock at night sometimes okay. even longer I mean, right we would be there all day we'd take a dinner break or a lunch break or whatever but we'd come right back and and rehearse and roll our songs man and i think that's the reason we got so good at uh what we did, you know. Because you guys can stop on a dime. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's it was, amazing. Uh, back, back then, uh, even the band, I mean, the band we got now is, is cool now because we had it for five years, but back then, we was, the original band was ridiculous with that, with that aspect of it. It was, it was utterly ridiculous because, I mean, everybody was like driven to be as good as they could at this. It was like, this is our only, we, we took it like, this is our only shot, we better go for it now and and that's the way all of us looked at it, you know, and, and that's the way we rehearsed. You know, we rehearsed nonstop. And that was uh, at the the warehouse, right? Yeah. We had a, uh, well, there we used to, uh, we first started, it was a place over Lake Street. We have a street here called Lake Street. It was kind of urban, ghetto, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we were in a, it was like a, a club or something, a little clubhouse or something that a prince rented for us, man. And uh, we'd be up in there every day. <laughs> he, he would run rehearsal, you guys go on your we own? Run, at first he did. At okay. first he ran it, but after a while he saw he didn't have to do that. And right. We started to do it ourselves, which was a lot better. Yeah, I mean, uh, Prince had his own thing. E even the drumming styles, you, you had Bobby Z, which was more electronic and program uh -huh. drums, and yourself playing a live kid and everything. Uh -huh. it, w it was just a great mix, and you know, I grew up on that kind of music. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was it, it was definitely a lot of fun, man. Uh, you know, I used to feel for Bobby when he had to, uh, you know, play with the drum machine, and stuff, right, man, because I could not do that. Right. And the guys in the time never, I, I give them credit. They never asked me to do that. Yeah, that, I guess that was my question. They never asked you to include that in they there, right? They never asked me to include. Would you, if you ever see a time show, I can honestly say in twenty years, you've never seen me play with a drum machine. Oh, I, I could definitely vouch for that. <laughs> I've seen you guys plenty of times. I saw you like four times in the last three or four years out in Tramp. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, well, we, Jelly Bean, we're going to take a short break, uh, okay. and we are going to come back. We're going to play something by the time, and then we're going to get delve into your uh, solo work and all okay. that. Okay. And Jelly Bean Johnson, he's in the house, and uh, the drummer for the time, and a great record producer and guitarist. We're going to talk about your guitar playing, too, <laughs> and all your upcoming projects. This is The Upper Room with Joe Kelly on 88.5 WVOF. Have you always wanted... We are back right here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly on a Monday afternoon slash evening, and we are talking with one of the top guys in the music business, drummer, guitarist, Jelly Bean. You sing? No, I can tell people what to sing, but I can't sing. Okay. <laughs> but uh, songwriter, producer, and Jelly Bean Johnson, want to thank you once again for uh, coming out to the Upper Room and joining us. My pleasure, man. So uh, we're talking about uh, the time and going back to that first record and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the first tour, actually, when you went out? Was it the Controversy Tour? It was the Controversy Tour. It was us. It was 
us, Prince, and Roger and Zap, man. Okay. Wow, that that's a special bill. Yeah, it it was a lot of fun, man. And, and you know, and, and a footnote to that, I mean, I really miss Roger, man. Oh yeah, it really broke my heart. When, when I heard that, I think it came over the wire, and I was just, I was crushed. I, I was devastated, man, because we had played shows with them, and I, and he was just a nice cat, man. He was just, uh, I just, I, uh, yeah, I don't even really want to talk about it. it yeah, yeah, really broke my heart. It really did. But yeah. uh, you know, with zapping you guys uh-huh. and and performing out there, what was it like? Okay, we're talking. Uh, you're out there touring as, as a young cat. Uh-huh. W- what was the experience like? Was it just awesome, or just it w- you were so busy playing that you didn't think too much? Well, I, I tried to take in as much as I can. It's kind of like a blur now because it was a long time ago. But I tried to take in as much as I can and could, and uh, it was a lot of fun, man. It was, it, it, you know, it was a lot of th- tour bus and stuff like that. It was a lot of hours riding on the bus and all that, but. Once you got on that stage, you forgot all about that. You know? Right. It was it was just straight up fun. You know. And, and who was choosing uh, the set list for you guys? Well, uh, back then we only had six songs anyway. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so fairly it, simple, it was, right? Yeah. It, it, what it came down is whether if Prince wanted to be, you know, be bad one night or something, he would cut us down. To, you know, like twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. Right. So what, what, what do you do? Pull the plug. He wouldn't pull the plug, but he he'd tell us we couldn't play. You know, like we used to, I remember in those days we used to start out with the stick. Well, if we started out with the stick, then we couldn't play after high school or oh okay. Or you know what I'm saying? He would cut us down to 15, 20 minutes, twenty. Which that he'd either do that or some nights we noticed our stage room would get less. less. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends on how bad we had whooped his tail the next week. It's right, like, right. You know, but uh, other than that, no, he, he, you know, he can, he didn't think with it too much because I mean, it was his stuff too. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? So, so, he, so he a- was good for the most part, man. So but after your set, what'd you do? You, you check him out, or well, I would stand there and check him out and see what the, what the, how the fans would react. Right. And we would, a uh, matter of fact, most of the whole band would do that, and, we, and then we gauge how they reacted to him versus how they reacted to us. Oh, okay. And that's how we could tell whether we won or not. I think that's how he could tell, too, because we could de- definitely, if we won, if the if the audience response for him wasn't as great as it was for us, we would find out in some kind of way. Okay. <laughs> you weren't traveling on the same bus, right? No, he had his own bus. Right. We had our bus, and he had, you know, that's back when we had a, you know, he was huge then, so he had, we had a bunch of trucks, some oh, yeah. and stuff, and everything. And it was like, I can't remember how many tour buses, but it was quite a few. Okay. So, uh, you know, I can remember the the first tour coming out, you know, Jesse, you know, comes out with the pink suits and yeah. everything. And yeah. w- was that by design and that's just Jesse? That's just Jesse. Uh-huh. I-, I can honestly say Jesse, you know, he was in, Jesse is, a, is an individual, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. He really is. He's very individual and, and he's a creative person stuff, you know. Oh, yeah, he, definitely a great his player. Whole, his whole thing was the pink thing, man. So he, he played that up. Stuff. He got, you know, he had some strats, strats painted pink and everything, and mm-hmm. got had to custom make pink suits and stuff, and that was his thing, you know, a little cute guitar player. Oh yeah, Prince kind of set it up for him. So. I, c- I can remember taking my girlfriend to the concert, and her eyes were on him. Yeah, so, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The girls love Jesse, man. They love Jesse almost as much as they love Morris back then. Right, he, right. He, they were in like competition with each other. <laughs> it was yeah. kind of funny, actually. Yeah, I mean, the, the stage. The, you even go back to if you want to check out the newspaper write ups, the time, and you you guys just were getting great write ups from yeah. some everybody. It was pretty yeah. much unanimous and everything like that. Yeah, it, 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 we were definitely hitting the nerve, man, and that's you know, and I think that's what made it all worthwhile. You mm-hmm. know, is that we we definitely was hitting the nerve. We definitely had people's attention and stuff, and we figured if we played that, that's the reason we had all that rehearsal stuff. But we figured if we played good enough. And we worked at it hard enough. People were going to notice us, regardless of you know what the, the situation was or what was going on with them internally. They were going to notice that day. These guys are, can play. They look good, and, and you know we need to pay more attention to them. Now, whose idea was it to get all the zoot suits? Uh, I, I want to say Morrison Prince, mm-hmm. but you know it, it it was as far as me and Terry and and and. Uh, Road and the rest of us, we was looking for something different anyway. So we had started to kind of just like that already anyway. Right. But uh, that just confirmed it once, you know, uh, Prince came to us with the concept and stuff. That just made it so much easier. And we just kind of raided a lot of the old vintage stores and stuff and started buying up, you know, smoking jackets. And so so what's the, uh, like what's, what's some of the best stores down in uh, downtown Minneapolis? Uh, 
back then it's kind of hard to remember. I remember there was a, a vintage store called Ragstock that we got a lot. I know I had a, a lot of stuff out of there. Um, I, it was another one I, I can't remember. And then in L.A., you know, when we go to L.A., there was a, a bunch of vintage stores there. We'd go Aardvark and uh, a couple other places there that we would get stuff. And then after a while, you know, Prince, the, the people started making us suits, too. Oh, yeah. So When the money started rolling in, the right? the money started coming in, <laughs> I started wearing custom made suits. Right. <laughs> so, so, which was cool, too. Right. So. Well, we're going to get into a track which uh, you guys kick off a lot of your uh, live shows with, uh, Get It Up. Okay. And, folks, if you haven't seen the time live, this, this is a real good part about the time because you'll hear the, the clock ticking, and it's kind of like a build-up, kind of like a Parliament Funkadelic show sometimes. <laughs> and you guys kind of build it up, and yeah, then yeah. the drums, you start pounding those drums. and yeah. It's a real spectacle, i got to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> That's you, the you whole got, idea. Just. You guys still play it like that? Yeah, pretty much. Get it up? Get it up? Pretty, well, it's, the song list has changed now. Mm -hmm. you know, but for years we did that. You know, We started up with Get It Up. Now Get It Up's moved down. Now we've... Uh, uh, I don't want to give away all our show, but we start now. It's just the same rave up and everything, but we start off with uh, uh, Oak Tree. Oh, okay. okay. That's cool. Yeah. All right, we're going to get into it right now. This is uh, Get It Up. From the time featuring uh, Jelly Bean Johnson, Morris Day, Terry Lewis, Jimmy Jam, Harris, Monty Moore, Jerome, Jesse, and uh, countless others. You got you got Tori and Chance in the band, and, and of yeah. course Freeze. But we'll get into the current stuff later on. But right now we're going to listen to "Get It Up." Jelly Bean Johnson and Joe Kelly in the upper room. 80 getting it up with the time. Morris Day, Prince, and of course the great members from the time. We are pleased to be talking this afternoon. Mr. Jellybean Johnson, who is uh, one of the top musicians in the music business. You, you do a lot of stuff, let me tell you. You know, I remember catching an interview with you on uh, BET with Donnie Simpson, another great guy, good uh -huh. friend of yours, right? Mm -hmm. and I you love were, Donnie. <laughs> and you guys were talking about uh, guitarists and where you go back to listen to uh, guitar players, right? Yeah. You, yeah. you know a lot of history, right? Well, yeah, they they call me Exyla Bean. That's Terry Lewis's name. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I just that was part of my development coming up, Joe. Is just you know try to know as much about who does what and and where it came from. And I mean, not even just the current stuff, the old stuff too. You know, and I, I, when I was in college, my last few years of college, I took you know classes like stuff, you know, studying the history of it and everything. So, so how big's your record collection? It's kind of crazy. When people come here, it's kind of crazy uh -huh. when they come to my house. It's, Something it's for everybody? Kinda, they try and, matter of fact, I think the CDs are trying to move me out around here. Oh, really? Um, so every once in a while, I have to go sell some and, you know, get rid of them. Because, you know, me, I, I, and with me, it's kind of hard, hard to do that. Because, you know, I, I always tell myself, well, no, I, I might listen to that. I might want to listen to that. You know? Oh, yeah. But sometimes, you know, when you get it so many, man, you just got to do it. You, you got to go on the computer on eBay, right? Huh? You, you got to sell them on eBay on the computer. I didn't know nothing. To, you know, I'm gonna tell you, Joe. I'm kind of computer dumb, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get better about it. I got a nice computer system here at the house, but I don't really. Yeah, you got to have Monty over one, one of these nights, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I keep telling Monty that we be, you know, going to the gigs. I said, man, you know, you need to come hook me up, bro, because I don't, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's real simple. Oh, uh, I know. That's what he said. Being it's really simple, just you know. But uh, yeah, I, I just got to sit down, and I got some other friends too that you know. Could, could easily show me, but I just got to take the time. Anyway. Yeah, definitely. Well, well, how about your guitar playing? I mean, uh, you know, many folks I know, and, and and certainly a lot of fans know, but the general audience, you you've played a lot of guitar on people's records and wrote written songs for folks. Yeah. I mean, you you've played songs and and produced songs for Nona Hendrix, Janet Jackson, and yeah. uh, wow, it's a folk. And then we'll get into later, Ronnie Baker Brooks. But, yeah, yeah. Um, what made you get into the guitar and putting it into the music with other folks? Uh, well, what made my first love for the guitar, what really made me take attention was Hendrix. And, okay. And it had to be, uh, I was mad and stuff because I was like 13 or 14 when I first got into him and he had just died. Wow. You know, I was like 70, 1970. Yeah, that spoils a lot. You know, and yeah. that kind of spoiled it for me, man. I was just, you know... Because my mom, you know, used to take me to all the concerts back then, you know, even as a kid, as like 12, 13 year old kid, I, you know, I got to see uh, Clapton, I got to see Santana, and all them folks, but I didn't get a chance to see him, you know, before he died, and, and, and it turned out he was the one I liked the best. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's when I started to get into it kind of heavily and stuff. At first, I started off with just a toy guitar. 
Okay. <laughs> you know, I had to go through that that whole scene of acting like I could play. I couldn't play a lick, but right. I had to pretend, you know. Uh huh. So and and then after a while, I uh, got a guitar. My mom got me a guitar that I, you know, that was kind of good and stuff, and I started kind of teaching myself. But uh, I went to school with this guy's a doctor now. He lives in uh, St. Louis, a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Tony Johnson, and uh, he started to teach me a few things. And, and uh, he lived in southeast Minneapolis. His dad was uh, like a surgeon, a major surgeon at the University of Minnesota. So what we would do, we'd leave high school and go up in his attic and we'd just play, you know, after school and stuff. And he started showing me little chords and stuff like that, and I started to, you know, get better at it and stuff. And after that, I just started teaching myself. Now, with the time, you, you guys ever, uh, you and Jesse go at it on the guitar? No, and see, and I tell people this, and they get mad at me sometimes and say, but I would never touch a guitar with Jesse around. I have so much respect for him, man. And he's just, you know, I learned so much stuff from him, you know, when he was in the band, him and Chris, but him especially because I was around him maybe more. Um, so, you know, at the time, I would just never... <laughs> right. I would never touch the guitar, you stuff, you know, and then when when Terry and Jimmy got their production stuff going, they asked me to play some guitar solos and stuff, and I was honored to do that, you know, but uh, with the time stuff, uh, I never even, I never really wanted to touch the guitar. I guess I, I guess you call it intimidation, Joe, I don't know. <laughs> but if you listen to these records, fans, you know that yeah. this brother can play the guitar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you consider your style? I mean... It, I, I, you know, I, personally, I think I sound kind of like Ernie Isley. That's okay. I, I, you know, it was a great, just the first time in like 20 years. I mean, I grew up listening a lot to Ernie, but uh, this past summer we toured a lot with the Isley Brothers mm -hmm. on this pa past summer and stuff. And I got to watch him every night, and I just realized just why I loved him so much. You know? Oh, yeah. Because he, he has that, that Hendrix. I mean, he was lucky enough to be around Hendrix, too, at a young age and stuff, too. And you could just hear it. You can hear all the, all the stuff there. You can hear it with Ernie and stuff. You know, Ernie, I always felt Ernie was underrated and didn't get a lot of, you know, as much credit as maybe he should have. Oh, he's, he's you know, had some great great guitar work yeah, solos, yeah. He, yeah, I, so I think my style would be closer probably to him. And the rhythm stuff is, of course, Prince Jesse and all that kind of stuff. Because, I mean, that's what like, we grew up listening to. You know, that, that was one of, the, one of the things I liked going back to, like, the 70s and 80s, that... The R and B bands weren't afraid to put down a, a loud guitar solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and today, you ain't gonna hear. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I was.